What's happening hardscapers? We got a wet, rainy day here, preparing the base. We have started to amend the subsoil down here. Fabric's going in and we've got gravel going in along this wall here. Just getting it ready. Gravel dropped off in tote bags so that we can just protect their driveway and uh, just give them a first class experience here. But we decided to cut two bags at the front garden as well as two bags at this side here. This just helps me not having to shovel out of the bags. Uh, tight access here, so we're not gonna get an equipment for this. More than 50% of the gravel's already dumped out right where I need it. Just feathering it in where it needs to go. So this was a nice, easy, just shovel forward, get it in the trench. And then we've got one, two, three more bags there to get going on the downside, as well as some of this actually will get feathered down in there. And then also we had two bags dumped off here, which is the perfect amount for this trench. As you can see, this is where all the water is conglomerating, I guess. So what we'll do is we will have a perforated pipe going along this to a low point, which will actually flow into our river rock bed that goes down the side of the house. And then we'll get into compacting in lifts to get to the right height. Basically what we'll do is along the trench, we will compact that, but we'll shove up a bunch of gravel to the foundation. We'll prepare our wall and then we'll shovel back that gravel to meet the wall, compact, then lay our pavers on top of that. And the pavers will be the same height as the wall here, as the wall cap sloping away and just shedding water off of that wall cap. I'll show you some project planning here and why we did what we did here. Now, one thing when it comes to project planning here, the reason why we're going retaining wall with a walkway meeting the height of the retaining wall, so essentially the cap of the retaining wall is part of the walkway, as opposed to digging this down and then now this would be pavers to meet the height of this, is that we've got this mess here. And if this is paver height, as it is the ground here, we've got all this mess showing above our pavers. We don't want that. We want to keep the level of the walkway as it was with the swale to be able to have pavers up here to hide all this mess underneath it. Then, if we're doing that, we're not gonna have this slope drastically to meet the swale. Instead, we're gonna build this up eight inches, get that to the height of the walkway, and that is how you would build a walkway to meet where the swale is pretty steep between the houses. Knowing how many steps to place here is basically using the altimeter, setting the zero point, and then going to the top measuring how much that difference is in height with that altimeter and just dividing by the rise of your steps. In this case, we're doing about seven inches and we need about eight steps in here all the way up. Now with this downspout, we're not gonna have this here blocking the walkway. So we will put a attachment on that'll go down and then it'll be under the pavers, about four inches of base on top of it and then pavers, and then it'll exit out the face of the wall to get that water away from everything. With this wall, I would like to go deeper into the swale here, but there are rules in this HOA that you can't get, you can't get into the swale and also we're getting close to the neighbor's property line, which we don't want to do anyways. So we've reached the point to which we have about four inches past the face of the wall you should have six inches. In this case, we're going four. And then we will carve this out a little bit more to give us a little bit more room in behind the wall as well for a nice, sufficient base. So I actually came for half a day yesterday, and now today is another half day because of this rain, to dig this out about four inches all the way down to the bottom. Non-woven geotextile goes on top and then our river rock will go on top of that just to clean things up here. They're not getting any vegetation growing in here anyways. We're gonna get a lot of rain and we've already got a lot of pooling here. So this is another half day. So 
total four days so far. Rain's getting harder and harder here and it is going to get really hard in like half an hour. So today is all about getting some errands done, getting ready for product to show up tomorrow. Product will be lined along the driveway as well as on the garden bed side and it will be installing by late tomorrow. As long as this rain holds off, it is going to continue through the night and then into the next morning. So we'll see what happens. Play it by ear with this rain. Now you may see that I decided to go dense graded base on this. Actually with most of my retaining walls, I do install dense graded base. I do not go open graded base for most retaining walls. The reason for that is because if you're going open graded base for your retaining wall, the drainage pipe needs to be at the bottom of that base, a little bit raised above the soil with the non-woven geotextile separating the subsoil from the base. And for that to be able to drain out, you do need a lower area in the yard for that to drain out to, whether that's a pop-up emitter or whatever that might be. In this case, we just don't have that available to us to drain into the front yard. We could go very far back into the backyard, about halfway the length of the house to drain out in uh, French drain style. That would be following the foundation. I don't want to do that. So in this case, we're doing a dense graded base that allows us to elevate the perforated pipe, collect that water, and then exit it through the face of the retaining wall to our river rock area, which I showed you there. Now I could go open graded base along this walkway along the foundation. I just decided to keep it all dense graded base through the this. We will still use HPB or quarter inch chip clean stone on top of this and install our retaining wall on top of that HPB as well as our pavers on top of that HPB. I never, almost never use concrete sand. Actually, you saw in our first project of this vlog that we did use concrete sand to raise the pavers on the synthetic base just slightly to get them to the height of the border pavers. That is and the concrete overlay is the only application I'll use concrete sand as my bedding layer. Otherwise, it's HPB all the way for our bedding layer. Hey, I hope this video has helped you in any way. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. That really helps me in this channel. And comment below anything that you wanna see in the future on these hardscape vlogs. What are you looking forward to? Whether it's installation tools, equipment, walkthroughs, job walkthroughs, job analysis, whatever it might be, leave that in the comment section below as well as any questions that you have. I'll respond to anybody and everybody that leaves a comment there. And subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content. Thank you so much for watching.